Whole. I am Phil Mendelson, Chairman of the Council and Chair of the Committee of the Whole. Today is Thursday, May 15, 2014. The time is 421 in the afternoon. We are in room 500 the Council Chambers of the Johnny Wilson Building. Uh, this is an additional meeting of the Committee of the Whole for the sole purpose of considering um, the report and recommendations of the Committee of the Whole on the Fiscal Year 2015 Budget and Corresponding Budget Support Act. This is what many of us call the Little Committee of the Whole because we're dealing with only that portion of the budget that are the agencies under the, um, the, and the budget um, chapters or lines that are directly under the Committee of the Whole. And the larger Committee of the Whole meeting will occur on May 28th where we will consider the entire budget after all the committees have finished their uh, markups, which they are doing this week. In fact, I believe that um, the Committee of the Whole today is the last one. Uh, before we turn to the report, which all the members have, um, I will call on Mr. Cash to call the roll to determine whether there's a quorum. Chairman Mendelson. Present. Councilmember Alexander. Councilmember Alexander. Councilmember Barry. Councilmember Barry. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bowser. Here. Councilmember Catania. Here. Councilmember Che. Here. Councilmember Evans. Here. Councilmember Graham. Here. Councilmember Grosso. Here. Councilmember McDuffie. Here. Councilmember Orange. Justin. Councilmember Orange. Councilmember Wells. Here. Justin. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, as I said, all the members have a copy of the um, draft report that was circulated yesterday. I am going to try to summarize this uh, quickly. The um, Committee of the Whole is charged with oversight over the performance and annual operating and capital budgets of approximately 20 agencies. Um, of these 20 agencies in the mayor's budget, uh, they comprise a total of $1.3 billion in gross funds and approximately 1,588 full-time equivalent employees. In order to review the mayor's budget proposal, determine the wants and needs of each agency under its jurisdiction and provide the public with an opportunity to comment, the Committee of the Whole held budget hearings for each of the agencies under its purview. The committee uh, received hours of testimony both from government and public witnesses. The committee also received written statements. The, uh, in fulfilling our prescribed oversight role for the fiscal year 2015 budget, the Committee of the Whole has been pleased with the cooperation of the executive and individual agencies in gathering and assessing information about the proposal. The committee has listened to extensive testimony from the public and agency heads to better understand the operations and needs of various agencies uh, having thoroughly reviewed the mayor's fiscal year 2015 budget proposal, uh, the recommendation before us, if adopted, uh, the committee believes that the recommendations contained herein provide each agency under its purview with the funds necessary to fulfill its core mission and represent the policy priorities that best serve the people of the District of Columbia. Uh, I am working off of the summary in the report, and I'm on page 15, that's Roman numeral 15. And under the capital budget uh, that's uh, specifically under the Committee of the Whole, with regard to the Council of the District of Columbia, the John A. Wilson Building would see a reduction of 175000 from the Mayor's Mark. The uh, Office of Municipal Planning would see no change from the Mayor's Mark. The Office of Zoning would see $175,000 added to um, its mark. And the University of District of Columbia would see no change Mr. in its Chairman. mark. Yes, Mr. May, may I uh, ever so respectfully ask where we are? I have the committee of the whole report. Well, I'm working off of page Roman numeral 15 in the summary. I want to be able to follow. Roman numeral f committee transfers? Well, that's uh, where I was going next. Okay, thank you. Which is that um, the in this, re this report, we accept the transfer of and just under $123,000 from the Committee on Government Operations. Uh, for the cost of adding an attorney advisor position in the Office of Labor Relations and Collective Bargaining. OLRCB is under the Committee of the Whole, even though it is within the Office of the City Administrator, which is within the Go Committee on Government Operations. Uh, also, in this report, we transfer $250,000 in local funds to the Committee on Government Operations for the purpose of funding Emancipation Day activities by the Executive rather than the Council. Turning to the uh, recommendations for each agency, I will begin with the Council. 
Council's budget. I'm now looking at page 16, Roman numeral 16 in the summary. The proposed fiscal year 2015 operating budget for the Council reflects the Mayor's proposal, less a $250,000 transfer out. The proposed budget fully funds the 3% pay increase given to most non-union city employees in April 2013, plus another 3% pay increase this coming October 1st. Otherwise, the total proposed shows no change from our approved fiscal year 2014 budget. There are, however, internal changes to the Council's budget. First, one FTE will be shifted from each committee budget to members' personal budgets. This reflects actual staffing patterns. Existing committee chairs will see no change to their overall committee personal FTE total. Second, both the Office of the Budget Director and the Office of the General Counsel will be budgeted for one additional FTE. The Budget Director will hire a contract analyst and the General Counsel will hire an attorney to work on code revision and the statutes at large. Transit benefits for council employees, an initiative started with the fiscal year 2014 budget, will continue in the FY 2015 budget. $100,000 is budgeted for this, which is a reduced amount, but which is closer to the demand actually experienced this year. The council has two small capital funds, a John Wilson building fund and an IT fund. The mayor proposed adding $500,000 in FY 2015 to the Wilson building fund, bringing its balance to approximately $1.6 million. This fund is available for small capital projects such as improvements to the council chamber and the hearing rooms. The proposed, the COW proposed FY 2015 budget for these capital accounts makes only one change from the mayor's mark to redirect $175,000 of the mayor's addition to the Office of Zoning for IT upgrades related to the zoning rewrite initiative. With regard to the Office of the District of Columbia Auditor, their, the recommendation is uh, the same as proposed by the Mayor. Uniform Law Commission, there's no change from the Mayor's mark. In the Office of Labor Relations and Collective Bargaining, increasing just under $99,000 in CSG 12 and an additional $24,000 in CSG 14 to restore an attorney advisor position that was erroneously eliminated from the proposed budget. And there are several recommendations uh, very quickly that OLRCB continue to work with labor groups and that OLRCB work more closely with the council in the transmittal of compensation agreements to avoid errors. With regard to the Office of Contracting and Procurement, there would be a decrease of approximately $300,000 in local funds and shifting uh, $375,000 from Program 4,000 to Program 9,000 to consolidate training funds. The reduction in PS is to reflect a salary lapse. The policy recommendations very quickly uh, that OCP work closely with agency heads, um, that OCP develop effective controls to preserve lines of authority from procurement staff located at agencies, back to the Chief Procurement Officer, uh, that OCP finalize plans for transitioning agency procurement staff to, to uh, OCP procurement staff and report these plans and any related budget impacts to the committee before the end of this fiscal year, 2014, that OCP continue engagement with all relevant labor groups, OCP post all new vacancy announcements on the uh, DCHR's website as soon as possible. The Contract Appeals Board would see an increase of approximately $300,000 uh, to create two new FTEs. These would be attorney positions uh, to assist the um, uh, two of the members of the Contract Appeals Board. Uh, and there's a, a policy recommendation that very briefly um, the CAB control its NPS costs. The Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, there's no change from the Mayor's recommendation. The Innovation Fund with regard to fiscal year 2015 uh, is uh, being deleted consistent with the Mayor's errata letter. There are a couple of policy recommendations that are listed in the report as well as in the summary. With regard to the Office of Budget and Planning, which is within the Office of the Chief Procurement Officer, there is no change in the uh, mark as proposed by the Mayor. There was a recommendation that the CFO work to finalize a contract for the SOAR replacement system as soon as possible in order to fully implement BMAPs for the fiscal year 2016 budget cycle. The Office of Planning, there is some shifting internal within the agency. Five positions from Activity 3010, Neighborhood Planning, to Activity 2010. 
Uh, one position from activity 3010 to activity 2020, which is historic preservation. Shifting four positions from activity 3010, neighborhood planning to activity 7010, citywide planning. Uh, and recommending adoption of the fiscal uh, of the um, fiscal year 2015-2020 capital budget authority, as proposed by the mayor. A couple of policy recommendations, very quickly. The OP reflect on its interactions with the community in previous years, and that OP work to ensure that the resources in the historic homeowner grant program are sufficient to meet demand. Office of Zoning. A shift of $121,732 uh, to move two positions to continuing full-time status, uh, increasing the capital budget by $175,000 uh, related to the zoning rewrite process. And a uh, recommendation that OZ ensure that BZA members are rigorously trained in legal standards for variances. The District of Columbia Retirement Board, uh, no change from the recommendation of the mayor. Uh, recommendations that the Retirement Board ensure the rapid completion of its data reclamation process and recommend that DCRB continue to foster good communication and relationships with other executive agencies and the council that is helpful when there's legislation before us that affects the Retirement Board. Police Officers and Firefighters Retirement System, no change from the recommendation of the mayor. Uh, recommendations uh, that DCRB continue to ensure the funding ratio stays at or over 100 percent and uh, to ensure that the district's contribution, annual required contribution, does not increase exponentially over time. The uh, Retiree Health Contribution Plan recommending adoption of the uh, budget as proposed by the mayor and uh, recommend that the OCFO look to the DCRB's practices in formulating assumptions for the trust fund and recommend that the District Department of Human Services do more to publicize the post-employment and benefits available to qualifying district employees since this is a recruitment and retention tool. University of the District of Columbia recommending no change to the budget as recommended by the mayor except to add 19 FTEs as budget authority. The dollars are there, but the budget authority for 19 FTEs needs to be added. There are several policy recommendations uh, recommending that the university complete its teach-out plan and to work closely with the faculty labor union to move forward with the elimination of its, of its academic programs uh, that have already been identified in its strategic plan and the corresponding reduction of force so that the, this can begin the notifications can begin August 2014. Recommend that the university begin planning for the community college's separate accreditation before 2016. Recommend that the university undertake formal steps to improve labor relations and provide an update to the committee by this September. Uh, the committee expects that $2.5 million enhancement for workforce development will be dedicated to that program, to workforce development, in addition to existing budget and resources. Uh, that's explicit in the report, recommend that the university develop more realistic enrollment projections going forward so that reliable data rather than historical numbers can be used to plan for future budgets. Recommend the university implement planned tuition increases no later than the upcoming spring semester and regular predictable increases thereafter for each fall semester. Uh, these measures require prior planning that they be implemented months, in some cases a half a year before the start of the semester in which they're expected to take effect. And that's what these recommendations get to, that the university has not been doing that. And recommend that the university work with their agency fiscal officer and the Office of Budget and Planning and the mayor to present more detailed information on the university's budget and future budget books, including thir um, through sessions. the use of appendices. Uh, with regard to the uh, University of the District of Columbia subsidy account, I recommend adoption as proposed by the mayor. And the remaining items, I believe, are also recommended as uh, proposed by the mayor. That's debt service, the John A. Wilson Building Fund, which is a different fund than that which I spoke of earlier, uh, workforce investments, uh, master equipment lease purchase program, again, um, recommending as proposed by the mayor. The Emergency and Contingency Reserve Fund, no change. Pay-as-you-go capital fund, no change. District retiree health contribution, no change from the recommendation by the mayor. I move the um, 
the recommendations Mr. as Chairman. fully set forth in the report and as summarized by me. Uh, Mr. Grasso? Uh, thank you very much, Chairman Mendelson. First, I want to say thank you to you and your staff for the hard work that was done to prepare this markup today. I would also like to highlight the committee's policy recommendations and expectations that the University of the District of Columbia allocates the $2.5 million enhancement for workforce development at the community college in addition to its existing budget and resources. I would also hope that UDC will post on its website the most recent KPMG audit reports for both FY13, FY12, FY11, and FY10 in order to be more transparent to the public. I'm committed to advancing workforce development in the District of Columbia. First, we must analyze how agencies spend the $100 million in public dollars that are allocated to educate our residents, prepare them to be employed, and assist them with finding meaningful employment. I want to thank Councilmember Bowser, who worked closely with my office and with her committee to include in their committee budget report an additional staff member at the Workforce Investment Council to focus solely on cross-agency spending of literacy, numeracy, and adult training dollars. This is important because we are at a turning point in our city. Officials, educators, and advocates are starting to work together to address how we are failing district residents. We are realizing the need to connect point A, education, with point B, jobs, a path that has either not existed or been broken for far too long. The University of the District of Columbia and the Community College are in the prime position to use this $2.5 million in workforce enhancement money to be the example of how workforce development programs can and should work in our city. Second, I am pleased that we were able to increase the budget for the Contract Appeals Board to hire two full-time equivalent staff attorneys. The Board has done an excellent job handling backlogged cases while clearing their docket of new cases. Currently, there are three judges who are staffed by only one attorney. The addition of two staff attorneys will enable the Contract Appeals Board to perform at full capacity, which is necessary at a time when we are seeing an increase in district government contract and procurement litigation. Lastly, I need to express for the record my concerns about the executive's reliance on the Office of Contract and Procurement's reforms to save the district 8% in 2016. As we know from both OCP's testimony and the executive's statement in the May 9th errata letter, the estimated savings from agency, contractor, and procurement reform will only add up to about 2%. Procurement reform is part of a longer list of savings, but we have not seen concrete totals. OCP is currently in the midst of their reforms and still have a long way to go to hire and train all the staff they need to be successful in this savings endeavor. I do not believe the mayor or the CFO's actions represent responsible budgeting, and I fear that the long-term ramifications will be detrimental to this city's financial stability. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, I want to note that I support this committee's recommendations and concerns. I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues to make this a fiscally responsible and transparent budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grasso. So further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gary. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me commend you for the tremendous amount of work I was just reading through here. And I was wondering how you find the time to do all of this. So I really commend you, quite frankly, for the thoroughness of the report and pointing out certain things. I'm very disturbed about the budget for the University of the District of Columbia. It's not your fault, not the council's fault. But the university, starting with the control board, has been sent down, down, down into a tailspin with the selling of the radio station. Uh, we were trying very hard to make UDC most students first choice rather than the last choice. We're at a point now where it is basically the last choice for too many students in the District of Columbia. We start talking to students in charter schools or, or traditional public schools, Mission UDC, like they like thumb your nose at you because the reputation of our university is plummeting. And part of the reason it is plummeting because the business community, other members of the com academic community, don't see the support for the mayor and the council. And I know how it works down here. If I want to propose more money, or well, you want to propose more money, I got to identify where it's coming from. And I've been doing all of that with human services. And I don't have any idea where to get the money from. But I want to point out that the board submitted a supplemental to the mayor 
or $21 million. $21 million. They've had to reorganize the university, uh, had to uh, eliminate certain courses in the wretched. Uh, the university has an excellent nursing program, but it needs to be expanded. And I'm just pointing it out to us so we know the attitude. The mayor did not fund that $21 million. He only put $2.5 million in the budget. And I've talked to the mayor about this, and I know his commitment, but it didn't show in terms of dollars. So I guess in, what we can try to do for next year, start early as a council, uh, lobbying the mayor and his people to put that money in the budget. You do see in the views of some people is being treated as a stepchild. I have my very degree from the university, so I'm an alumnus of UDC. I'm a graduate of two historically back institutions, Lamont College and Fisk University, and UDC needs to be enhanced financially. It needs to gather the statute that we wanted to gather by supporting it. So I just want to point this out, Mr. Chairman. I have no recommendations about where the money comes from. But I know that the mayor should have sent more over here for our great university. And the mayor needs to strengthen the board of direct board of trustees at UDC. People who are sincerely, they are interested, but sincerely interested in the welfare of our higher education. And finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, during this upcoming year, I'm going to work hard as I can to figure out, help us all figure out how I can eliminate tuition at our community college. The biggest barrier for African-American students is finances. They drop out of school because of finances, some academically, sure. We should have no barriers for our high school students in both charter, private schools, and public schools. So I wanted to thank you for your diligence in this area. And so this budget is just a reflection of the mayor's problem and not you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Councilmember Bowser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to uh, thank you and thank the staff for all their hard work. And additionally, I wanted to thank my own staff who um, put together uh, our Committee on Economic Development's report and um, all the committee members who um, su supported our efforts. We thank you. I did have a specific question um, about Title VI, Subtitle E. Um, in the Integrated Premium Transit System Amendment Act of 2014, um, which it seems to speak pretty specifically to the streetcar procurement. Um, and I'm just wondering about the kind of the ad hoc nature of these changes and wanted to ask you to clarify um, what exactly this will allow. Uh, very simply, and we did not give a lot of attention to this because we did not make changes from what the mayor had submitted, and we did not look at the transportation aspects. I believe this was referred to both the um, Committee of the Whole and the Committee on Transportation and the Environment. And as I'm sitting here, I do not know if the Committee on Transportation and Environment commented on this or what their comments would have been. But um, we... Um, we were interested in the uh, the sections of this subtitle that relate to procurement, and uh, we found that um, they were not objectionable. Okay. It would appear that um, they're defining uh, what construction means, uh, particular to transit systems, which, you know, doesn't seem to be problematic. They're also adding the ability for a bidder uh, to... Um, offer more in his or her response than what the RFP calls for and it seems to codify that that's that's okay and again um, you know on its face that doesn't appear to be a problem but it does speak to um, this very large procurement of up to a billion dollars uh, that we're going to spend on the streetcar system uh, and making sure that we have not only the right procurement vehicle but the the right people who are, are working on this very important procurement in the months ahead. So I, I just wanted to note that um, we're, we're making some changes to the process and we should follow it very, very closely. 
Yes, and I'll be happy to um, talk with you further about this between now and May 28th. As you know, the council members are getting together next week informally in a work session, and uh, all of these issues are on the table at the, um, at the work session to the extent that members have concerns. Thank you, Councilmember Bowser. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Orange? Yes, uh, I have an amendment. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to ask this, this body to delay the transfer of the emancipation funds from the council to the executive for one year. And the reason being is that 2015, uh, there will be a number of milestones. One is the 15 year anniversary of, anniversary of Carol Swartz and myself introducing legislation making DC Emancipation Day a private legal holiday. It will be the 10 year anniversary of my legislation making DC a, the only DC public legal holiday. It's, it will be the 153rd anniversary of DC Emancipation Day. And it will also represent the 150th anniversary of the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln, which will occur on April 15th, a day before our activities on April 16th, which would provide us a golden opportunity to have uh, a, a very exciting and a very rewarding uh, Emancipation Day. It also next year uh, marks the opening of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And it's also the 150th celebration of the Grand Review Parade of 1865 that I know former council member Frank Smith has talked to you about. If you look uh, in the amendment that I've passed out, you'll see this year we were able to generate on the front page of, of the Washington Post Metro section a special day in D.C. And the fact that we will have a new administration coming in, that administration will be focused on getting their cabinet together, going through confirmation processes. And this particular emancipation next year needs to be worked on now. We have an opportunity to get President Obama to be the uh, keynote speaker at the breakfast. We have the opportunity to get Lonnie Bunch, who is the, fa uh, the, the head of opening the, the National African American History uh, Museum to be a keynote speaker at the brunch and also to headline the concert with Stevie Wonder. Now, you can't wait until January to make those arrangements. Uh, you know, permits need to be secured now. Facilities need to be secured now. And I also see that you have here only $250,000. We have a group in place, an independent group, that's ready to raise a half a million dollars because of the significance of 2015. We will not see 2015 again. And to delay this for one year, because as I've indicated to you, I do believe that it should be with the executive branch. The only reason why it came back to the legislative branch is because the executive branch dropped the ball. And let me close by saying the executive branch dropped the ball again this year because if you note, Mr. Chairman, what you participated in, there was nothing this year about Loretta Carter Haynes. Yet last year we started the Loretta Carter Haynes Emancipation Day Awards program. This lady is the keeper of emancipation. There was nothing said about her at all this year. If you look at this program, you'll see the council is excluded. You'll see that I'm excluded. That's fine. But this is the mindset of what we're dealing with. And even this card here, the council is not included on this. Everyone else is being recognized. This is coming from the other side. It's as though we don't even exist in this process. And the only reason why we're here today is that this is a situation about this whole permits that was uh, generated by the executive branch. This council stuck to the $350,000 budget. It followed all the uh, 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 procedures that were placed before us by going through the mayor's task force. And mind you, on April 9th, we received the mayor's order to proceed. Two days before you called me, and I have a two minute recording, if you'd like to hear, refresh your memory, where you said the mayor would actually absorb the cost and we could proceed. And then on the evening of April 15th, you call me the day before the event and says the only way we can proceed is if you agree to give this back to the mayor. And I said, tell the mayor whatever he wants to hear. Uh, you know, we need to move forward because we would be sued out of the gazoos because we had already established contracts and Mr. received all these approvals. Your time's expired. Well, yeah, I know my time is up, but this is a very important issue, uh, 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 Mr. Mendelson, that I these think I should be able to at least finish uh, this report. So in any event, 
you know, if I can just have a quick 30 seconds. You know, no this, this kind of reminds me of Walter Payton, the great running back for Chicago Bears. Run up and down the field all those years for the Chicago Bears. They make it to the Super Bowl. And it's time to get the touchdown. Mike Dicker called for the refrigerator's number and let William Perry, the refrigerator, run in and get the touchdown. Why did he do it? Because he could. And Walter Payton died without ever getting a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And everybody knows all the work he did. So in this case, we got Loretta Carter Haynes did all this work. And there's nothing here to, to, to resemble her or to even acknowledge her work in this process. And to delay this one year is no sweat off of anyone's back other than you cut a deal with the mayor. Thank you, Mr. Orange. Uh, I'm, if this could be circulated, please. I'm going to uh, not accept this, and I would ask that members not um, vote for this. And I would also like to note that there are no signatures on this amendment that have been, has been circulated. Uh, and in talking with members, I believe that they, uh, a majority of them continue to be where they were when I spoke with them about this on April 16th. Uh, the, the issue before us is not about Emancipation Day, uh, nor is it about how much money should be uh, uh, committed to Emancipation Day. The issue here really is about whether we honor our word. Uh, and fundamentally, that's what it is. And let me just be frank about it. Um, these are the facts. And what I'm circulating right now is a copy of an email that I sent to Councilmember Orange on April 15th, immediately after my conversation with him. Um, and it was only after my conversation with him that I then spoke with the mayor and agreed that we would make this transfer. And the email to Councilmember Orange is very clear that the agreement was that these funds would be transferred to the executive for fiscal year 2015. On the back of this email is a um, clipping from the Washington Post that reported on this deal. Uh, at the time that the deal was made, uh, the press wondered whether, in fact, we would go forward with the parade. And Mr. Orange is quoted as saying that he's glad that we're at this point. We're glad that he's glad that the uh, executive is recognizing that this is a government holiday and stating publicly his agreement with the uh, agreement between the mayor and the council. And I would also like to note that on April 16th, I spoke with all but two members of the council with regard to whether they would agree with this agreement. I wanted to make sure that it was not me alone or me and Councilmember Orange alone. And um, of the 10 members of the council with whom I spoke, every one of you agreed that uh, you would support returning Emancipation Day to the executive. Um, so this is really a question of uh, whether we honor our word and our commitment and fundamentally in representing the legislative branch to the mayor only after Mr. Orange said to me that he would ag ag agree with this, that he would b abide by the agreement, did I say to the mayor that we had a deal, that the uh, mayor would absorb the costs this year and uh, we would transfer the dollars. Um, this is, again, not about... This is not about Emancipation Day. If anybody's watching and wondering whether Emancipation Day is at risk, uh, it is, that is not the issue. It is not, and that is not the issue. It's um, about whether this is an executive function and actually more fundamentally, whether having made an agreement that all the members were aware of a month ago, whether we are going to stand by our word or not. So I do not support this amendment and ask that members did not vote for it. Mr. Chairman? Is there anybody Mr. else who would like to speak? Uh, Councilman Alexander. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm going to fully disclose that I, I don't recall having a conversation with you, but I do recall having a conversation with Council Member Orange, and I did tell him that I would support it. I think he's done a great job with Emancipation Day, uh, and I want that to continue. But I had not been given the information um, that Council Member Orange agreed um, for the executive to take this over in 2015. And I think in all fairness, Council Member Orange, you didn't tell me that. So in light of that, that you agreed to it and you spoke to the chairman about that, I can no longer support this. I do want to continue with the Emancipation Day wholeheartedly. But if <clears throat> the two of you agreed for the executive to take this over, then I think in all fairness, you need to 
um, stick to your word. And I just want an explanation as to why you've changed um, and made this decision because, I mean, it'll still be all of the milestones that you mentioned here. Nothing's going to change about that. Next year, if the executive takes it over, it will still be your 15th anniversary, and I think that should be acknowledged. So I really don't, I don't understand the rationale of why you, I'm, I'm not hearing why you want it to stay with the council. Thank now, you, Mr. Chair. Through the chair to, to, to you to, to respond to your question. Tom, uh, would you keep the clock going, please? Uh, the, the, the bottom line here is that this call was made to me on April 15th, or communicated to me a day before the Very event. Nice. Now, this does not, uh, I mean, and e even in pure contract law, when you're cutting deals, someone sticks a gun to your head or makes you do something under, under duress or coercion, it's, 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 it's not deemed an uh, acceptable arrangement. At that point in time, you've got to remember, on April 8th, we presented to the full council the entire uh, arrangement for D.C. Emancipation Day. The next day, we received all the uh, uh, the permits and the executive order. And then the, ma then the mayor says, we got to pay $116,000. It had, it had in over the 15-year period, we've never paid for police. We've never paid for fire in EMS. But we've paid for the other things. Mr. McDuffie helped us out with DGS. We paid for DDOT. We paid for National Park Service. So there was no expectation. If there had been an expectation, that's what this is really all about. It came because the mayor, after providing permission, after providing all the permits, then the day before the event is to take place, when we've executed contracts with uh, BET and, and uh, with the National Park Service, with the fireworks people, they say we're going to cancel this function unless you agree to give it back. That's how it happened. So, 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 so that's not what's being stated. And then, uh, once again, uh, Mr. Millicent isn't being totally truthful in, in my view because, you know, he has this, this message that he, he left me. Um, I'm 95 sure. I guess you, you, you can't hear it, but it's the April 11th when you called me and the mayor told you that he would absorb the cost. And you said, there's no doubt in your mind. The same thing was told to the council secretary, and we proceeded on. It wasn't until the 15th that you came back with, with saying, well, they will absorb it only if you give it up. Mr. Orange, your time has expired. Mr. Mr. Barry? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Barry, and then Council Member Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have no knowledge of what agreement was made. It might have happened while I was uh, recovering from my illness and wasn't around. So I don't have any knowledge of it. So I don't consider myself a party to it. I have talked to Mr. Orange. And as I understand what happened, I can't tell his state of mind and being at that time, except I got the impression he was against the wall that the day before the events were supposed to go on, the contracts had been signed, and if you didn't agree, we'd have had a lawsuit, we'd have a messed up emancipation uh, parade, emancipation day, and so my, my view is, I'll put you on the list. it's not a struggle between the council chair and Mr. Orange. Uh, I think each of us can at some point we get further information and change our minds. Now I handle people, I handle it differently. Somebody put a gun in my head, I handle it different than some of you. You know, I damn the shoot. And <laughs> it's true in that bit. But he handled it that way. He felt compelled to, to say yes when he should have said no. Because if he had said no, the event would not have taken place. We'd have been embarrassed. Uh, by, by doing that. So I agreed to support uh, Mr. Orange only because he went in great detail with me about the dynamics was going on. I don't like to be stuck up. He doesn't either. And I'm surprised that Mayor, Mayor Gray did that. He usually not a stick up artist. And so I'm going to support Mr. Orange unless the dynamics change up here somewhere or another. Uh, let me just note, if I may, Mr. Berry, uh, there were two members with whom I did not speak. You and Mr. Evans were the two with whom I did not speak. Everybody else I did uh, talk to on um, 
April 16th or in the case of Mr. Wells on April 17th. Um, let me also be clear. There was, if you will, a negotiation. I went to the mayor's office and we went back and forth and I argued strenuously that uh, um, the uh, executive was too late in uh, giving us costs, estimates for what the agency costs would be. And the mayor was very clear that uh, those were going to have to be covered. And if you look at the legislative language that the council adopted last year, it was clear then that uh, the um, agency costs were to be included. This was a negotiation. And when I went back to uh, Mr. Orange, he did not have to say yes. He did say yes. And the email reflects that because it was important that uh, that be memorialized. Um, he did not have to. I do not know that uh, the event would have been canceled. Would the mayor have wanted that? I don't know. It was already being reported as canceled in the news. Orange, you do not have the floor. It was Council already being Bowser. reported as canceled in the news. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I, That's what affected Mr. Chairman, the attendance. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, and I want to just jump in and here say, because I am um, a great supporter of the Emancipation Day holiday and the, the activities that surround it, and I'm looking very much forward to working with everybody to make sure that it's a, a, a big and meaningful celebration. Uh, I did have the opportunity to speak with you, um, and I lent you my support then as I, as I do now. Uh, my question, however, because I think Mr. Orange raises some very good questions about logistics, um, because there is an enormity of, of, of planning that goes into these events, and there's some milestones that will be hit in the next year. And I'm wondering if you and Mr. Orange could work together on language that would make it clear um, that Mr. Orange or the council, however you decide, uh, can work on the planning events all the way, of course, through this fiscal year and in the first quarter of 2015 um, to make some planning arrangements to set aside a budget that could be promptly turned over to um, the next mayor um, that would, in fact, not delay um, planning and make it clear that Mr. Orange would have or however you assign would have the authority um, to make some of those plans. I, it seems to me a, a reasonable way to move forward that would not disadvantage the planning for the, for the events of next year. Uh, absolutely. That could even be included as a drafted as a subtitle. Councilmember Catania? Uh, is there further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Yes, Mr. Orange. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also ha have a question as to why in this bill it's $250,000. Let's assume the mayor's number is right, $116,000 uh, for all these so-called costs. So $116,000 from this measly $250,000, you might as well you know, forget about emancipation, and you might as well forget about even meeting the challenge of all the milestones next year. I thought the budget was $350,000, but now you, you're talking about $109,000 for emancipation. No, you don't have to include me in the language. I'm not going to be a part of that. Uh, you know, I, I, I can jump out right now. I mean, you, you're already setting it, up, setting it up for it to be absolutely nothing. If the, if the mayor is telling you and he sent that document down, uh, down to us after he had given us the permit, $116,000 right now. You, have, you know that right now going in. And yet you're, you're, you're talking about a measly $250,000? What kind of planning can you do with that? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barry. Chairman, thank you very much. I want to thank Ms. Bowser for a thoughtful suggestion uh, indicating what her philosophy is about how you resolve problems. Rather than have confrontation and conflict, you have some togetherness on it. And it doesn't get us anything for us to go through what we call in the streets, he said, she said, uh, kind of stuff. So, man, I, I really want to commend you, and I hope we take her advice. I got the impression the chairman would take her advice and work on the planning part of this up until January, and then you can deal with it after January and make sure it happens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, what can you do with $109,000? Uh, Mr. Orange, you're not recognized, and you've just spoken. I, I, I've raised a question to you, and I didn't get a response. How did it get the, the, this $250,000? The amendment is before us, and you've not been recognized. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I did I ask the question. question. Can we change the I just have one more question. What, what was your um, rationale to 
shift to the executive? Uh, my rationale yeah, I know. was pretty simple because when the mayor suggested it, I disagreed with him. You're asking me to speak to the negotiations. Um, in the course of the discussion, he said that he would um, absorb the costs that he was trying to get the council to pay, which he estimated at about 116000 And I said um, if um, he, he said he would absorb the costs if the uh, responsibility would be transferred back to the executive. And uh, I said uh, that um, I thought that was possible and that I would talk to Mr. Orange. And it was after I talked to Mr. Orange that I then got back to the mayor and said uh, that um, uh, that would be a deal. So, um, and that's would, reflected in what I circulated. He would absorb the cost from what it, I think it cost us close to 400000 No, the council spent uh, roughly 340000 this year. And the costs that the uh, mayor was saying that uh, the agencies that we should pay were an additional, he said, 116000 I don't believe that number was accurate. Uh, and I don't mean by that to disparage the executive. Um, there was some double counting, for instance, of the Department of Recreation costs. because Those were included in the $340,000 that we paid. And I also believe that some of those costs were um, overstated. Uh, we did not have a bill. And um, I don't want to perpetuate this discussion, but uh, in working with Councilmember Orange, he had bills from certain agencies. For instance, Department of Parks and Recreation had sent a bill of $10,000 to the Secretary. The Secretary then encumbered $10,000 out of the 350. We did not have that for MPD. We had, if I remember correctly, uh, an estimate of $60,000. $60,000. Um, I think that's way too high. But all of this is the day before, and uh, so... So the 250000 will complement whatever the executive is going to pay? Uh, yes, that's what I think. And we can also be clear about that. Well, well, how can you say that when it's nowhere in the budget? Mr. 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 Orange, mm -hmm. I'm Chairman. recognizing members in order, and um, I believe Ms. I believe Councilman Alexander was the last to be, uh, asked sure. to be recognized. I want to speak one final time, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Barry, final Evans. time, and then Mr. Evans. Mr. Chairman, can I have a point of order? Uh, uh, I did in, in, in my... No, you can't in, have in, a point in, of order. Well, point of information. And the reason why you can't have a point of order is because... Um, I, I raised the question see, as was to a, why is it $250,000, and I believe that I should be able to get a response. In, in, in my three Mr. minutes, Orange. I raised the question to the chair. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Orange. could you please explain why I'll is it $250,000? I'll give you an answer, Mr. Orange, but the $250,000 is not the issue of your amendment. Council control is the issue of your amendment. My answer to you would be this. If the council wants to look at the amount, we can look at that amount in our discussions next week. Uh, we are sitting down to go over all of the budget, and I think it would be quite in order for us then to look at whether $250,000 or a different amount should be what we put in the final budget. What is before us today is um, what the amendment before us has to do with um, deleting from the Committee of the Whole report as I circulated it the transfer of the money to the executive. Mr. Barry? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me just uh, make an observation. Uh, it seems to me, as you said a few minutes ago, Mr. Orange, that these discussions can take place about whether or not there's too much money, not enough money. But more importantly, uh, if the planning is going to occur between uh, the council uh, and the executive with the council taking the lead, but in January, if it's not enough money, the next mayor can reprogram Absolutely. money to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm confident who that mayor would be, but also I'm confident that that person would be open to making things work. And so I guess my question to you, did you accept Ms. Bowser's recommendation that you and Mr. Orange work on planning? Uh, yes, I did. That, um, that I will work with Mr. Orange, of course, and I can't remember if she said or I kind of elaborated that we could do a subtitle, and I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. Let me ask Mr. Orange, since it seems like everybody's on the same page, I'm there. Uh, I'm there. is this amendment necessary? Uh, Mr. Berry, uh, I'm a strong to, ally. Give the chairman to, to, to Mr. Berry. Um, it's my turn. 
for the past three years, it always seems like we've been on the same page, and that's what the problem is. This committee that had oversight over this went through the mayor's process. In, in January, we met with the mayor's task force and all the agencies around the table. They told us what we had to do. We left that task force meeting and met with the National Park Service. Within a week, the National Park Service sent us a bill for $5,577, and they itemized what police officers would be on duty. Then we went back to the mayor's task force in March, and they said, okay, now what about the electricity and water? Work it out with, uh, I believe it was DCRA, and they gave us approval. That's the process that you use in the District of Columbia. This has nothing to do with the, with the mayor. It's going through a process that's set up for these type of events. And when you receive oh, approval, that's it. And then the final piece is when you yeah, receive well, the mayor's be, executive yeah. order, and in the order it states that the council of the secretary of the Council of the District of Columbia and the chairman of the Committee on Business and Consumer Regulatory Affairs shall proceed. That's on April 9th. And so then to get something on April 15th, indicating that all of a sudden there's $116,000 and there are no invoices. Every other agency sent invoice. We paid $10,000 to uh, the Office of Cable Television through a memorandum of understanding. We paid, uh, 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 I think, about $9,500 to the Lincoln Theater through a memorandum of understanding. That was the process. So when we, when we had our report on April 8th, all bills have been received. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Evans has to, is next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, in following the discussion here, is it my understanding that Mr. Orange and Mr. Mendelson have reached an agreement whereby the council will be in charge until January 2nd, at which point the new mayor will then be in charge. And if so, can Mr. Orange um, amend his amendment stating that so we can all vote for it and move on? I, I think all of that us That wasn't, uh, I didn't realize that that was what anybody thought was an agreement. What is before us is the fiscal year 2015 budget. And in the report is a transfer of $250,000 to the Committee on Government Operations for the Executive Office of the Mayor for Emancipation Day. Mr. Orange has moved an amendment to strike that. That's what's before us. Well, can Mr. Orange move an amendment to strike that until January 2nd in compliance with the discussion that took place here? It's a compromise between the no, two No, I positions. will not support that because that's not the uh, agreement that, uh, that was made that Mr. Or was made after Mr. Orange agreed to it and that um, most of the members, and you were the other person with whom I did not speak, that most of the members had said that they agreed to. The dollars <coughs> will belong to the, uh, to the mayor, to the executive, the FY15 dollars. What I said, and this may be causing the confusion, <laughs> is that we can write, if we want, in the Budget Support Act, a subtitle that gives some um, parameters to Emancipation Day, if we want to, uh, that also could speak to involvement by the council if we feel we need to do that. But, um, but that's what it would do. So is there any compromise between yourself and Mr. Orange that would allow all of us to vote for that rather than asking us to choose sides in this debate here today. That's, Mr. What, Mr. Well, that's what everybody's looking for is a I compromise. I understand that, but is Mr. Any, Orange has an chairman, amendment. can you come up with one? No, I can't because Mr. Orange is moving to strike, moving the dollars to the executive, and that was the agreement to which he agreed. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Merche. I move to close debate. A motion to close debate, which is not debatable. Anybody who has not spoken will get to speak one more time. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to close debate say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. Uh, is there anybody who has not spoken who wishes to speak? Uh, we have the amendment before us. Mr. Chairman, I think there may be Chairman. some willingness from Mr. Orange to um, withdraw this and consider um, another, a, uh, something else. Um, in the lines of uh, what Mr. Evans, um, I'm losing track of what everybody just. Mr. Chairman, what's before us? Uh, what's before us is Mr. 
Orange's amendment, which was the Mr. second. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I will withdraw that amendment. Okay, the, the amendment's been withdrawn. Uh, we have the um, report. Not before us now. The uh, report as circulated by the. Mr. Chairman. By the staff of the Mr. community Chairman, hall. Councilman Bowser. Would you, would you um, consider for the record uh, additional language or perhaps in a subtitle um, that would indicate at, at a minimum, and maybe we can discuss more next week, um, that the, the council uh, would be involved with the planning of, the ne of next year's Emancipation Day um, through uh, January, to, up to and including, um, you know, preliminary plans and invitations in a budget that would be transferred to the next mayor. Uh, what I'm writing down here is that the uh, subtitle that the council be involved in the planning up through Jan up to January. Um, I have no objection to that. W what we'll do is we'll include that in the committee action and then work on the language. I have no objection to that. I assume there is no objection to that. Uh, any further with regard to the uh, report? All right, we have the report. Uh, before. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilman Moran. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as as we um, move forward uh, with this, uh, I would hope that we take a very objective look at the entire process of the emancipation activities and look at all these costs uh, and look at the past history and come up with a workable budget in order to implement. Uh, 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 DC's only holiday, DC Emancipation Day, because if it's once again, if it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars we're talking about here today, and if we were to use the mayor's number of one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, we're talking about one hundred and nine thousand dollars for the uh, this milestone emancipation that's taking place and all the other activities. So I hope that that will be part of the deliberations as well. Yes, it will be. Uh, we have before us the uh, Committee of the Whole re recommendations uh, as, um, what do I say, as uh, largely summarized by me and as fully presented in what was circulated to all of the members with the addition in the Committee, re uh, committee Action section, we will describe Council Member Bowser's recommendation as um, accepted by the committee. The language will be worked out. Um, next week. All those in favor of the report say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. Uh, before we adjourn, I do want to take this moment, I believe every committee does this, to thank the staff on the Committee of the Whole that worked on this report. Uh, Evan Cash, who's the Committee Director, Tanika Miller, uh, who's Legislative Counsel Je Jessica Jacobs, who's Legislative Counsel Renee Johnson, uh, Brian Moore, uh, and uh, also because this is the Committee of the Whole, even though the input is not as great as it will be, the uh, budget office and the budget director. I want to thank everybody for their help with regard to this. The time is now 5.19 in the afternoon, and this meeting is adjourned.